Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen versus none other than Danny Miracle Man Jacobs. The fight's going down this Saturday at the Barclays Center in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. So I will be there. But before we get into all that, let me break down the fight for you guys, step by step, who I got with it, and who you should put your money on if you want to win some money. It's AJ Knows Boxing. Make sure you subscribe to the channel right now. Let's get into the fight breakdown. Now, these both these guys, man, they're definitely punchers. They're punchers at the core. We already know Kid, Kid Chocolate. The boy has nothing but tremendous power in both his motherfucking hands. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to definitely come in there and be more attack driven in this fight. He doesn't have a great amateur background. He's not the quintessential boxer. Even in the fight with Andy Lee, where he looked more like a boxer, to me, I don't feel I didn't feel like he looked comfortable in the ring. And that's why he got his first mark to his record with that draw. Peter Quillen is more effective when he's coming at you and trying to destroy you and try to knock you out or just embarrass you like he did to end up. And Danny Jacobs being that he has the extensive amateur background. The boy has been around the world, toured around the USA. The boy has that boxing ability. He's Still a puncher, but he does have that boxing ability. And me being that it's boxing, and I always go back to the fact that it's boxing, I feel like if Peter Quiller doesn't get the knockout early on in this fight, and I mean between the fourth and the seventh round, if Peter Quiller doesn't get a knockout in this fight, I feel like Peter Quiller is going to be in for some trouble. He may be in for another draw, or he may take his first L to his record. Now, everybody's going Peter Quiller right now. And I don't blame him. Most people don't watch these fights. Most people don't really look at the fight the way I look at the fight. And, of course, they're going to go for the power puncher. And me being a fan of both fighters, I love Peter Quillen's style. And I love Danny Jacobs' style. They both Brooklyn guys that represent my hometown. So there's no bias here. I just feel like Peter Quillen's major flaw is the lack of boxing. He does it key into the fact that he actually has to box being a boxer. He uses the fact that he's bigger than a lot of these guys and takes advantage of it. Being that he's six feet, he's a big middleweight. Come in, he came into his last fight against Zarafa at 190 something pounds. And who knows, he might have been a heavyweight coming into the fight. Definitely a cruiserweight. But definitely could have been a heavyweight coming in against Zarafa. And he injured Zarafa, fucked his whole night up. Now, Danny Jacobs. Has the height advantage over Peter Quillen. He has the reach advantage over Peter Quillen. He has the boxing IQ advantage over Peter Quillen. And the only flaw that Danny Jacobs does have is the fact that he's been knocked out. And Peter Quillen is a knockout artist. So that's the only thing. But if basically, if Peter Quillen doesn't get that knockout early, I don't see him knocking Danny Jacobs out late. Because Danny Jacobs is the more, he's way more conditioned than Peter Quillen. Danny Jacobs, everything Danny Jacobs does. In my opinion, it's better than Peter Quillen from a boxing standpoint. Better jab, has better ring, he has better ring IQ, he has better movement. Only thing I give Peter Quillen is the fact that he has the power advantage. He doesn't have the speed advantage, in my opinion. And as well, he does have the better names on his record. He has four Gabe Rosado, has four Andy Lee, has four, excuse me, I'm sick, Gabe Rosado, Andy Lee. Also, Ed Dow, which is a great boxer. And Ed Dow was able to outbox him. If it wasn't for the, all those knockouts, I mean knockdowns, Ed Dow would have won that fight. So what does that say about Peter Quillen? So Andy, what does that say? Andy Lee fight, he also had the power advantage. He knocked Andy Lee down. But Andy Lee came back, knocked his ass down, and then slowly boxed his way. Comfortably box his way into a draw. Some people say Andy Lee should have won, but the fight was being held in Brooklyn. And being that Peter Quiller had a lot of things against him coming into the ring, overweight, like coming into the fight, missing his opportunity to regain his title. I already knew that Peter Quiller wasn't going to win that fight. It's all up here. Being that Peter Quiller does look like he's in shape, he does look like he wants to fight. 
I can give him that. But personally, Peter Quillen himself said he fights for the money now. He's not fighting for the title. And Danny Jacobs is fighting for the title. Him being the first cancer patient to ever come back and win a title, I really feel like the title means more to Danny Jacobs. And I see this fight going Danny Jacobs' way or being a draw and Danny Jacobs keeping his title at home. And moving on to fight maybe a Eubanks Jr. or taking the higher role because Peter Quill is going to look for the money. And whoever's going to bring him the money, he's going to take. And I think Danny Jacobs is more championship oriented. We do see him in Brooklyn. He does keep that belt around his waist. And he is definitely the people's champ with Brooklyn. So let me know what y'all think. I'm giving y'all perspective from the ground, from Brooklyn. And just leave a comment. Let me know what y'all think. Like the video if you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's AJ Knows Box for the best box review. I got Danny Jacobs by decision. Or Peter Quillen by draw. It's going to be a close fight. That's why I would definitely be tuned in. It's all Showtime this weekend. So make sure you tuned in. And it's AJ Knows Boxing, the best boxing channel in the fucking world. And I'm out. One.